Hello, this is David Sali. Uh, I'm here with Rebecca Benito. We're um, starting our second um, free live streaming uh, introduction to a course we're calling Creativity Beyond Captivity. Um, and this actual series that we're doing is called Creating No Matter What. And yesterday we talked about um, identifying what, what you long to create. Uh, giving yourself the freedom to actually desire whatever it is your deepest desires are, actually allowing yourself to hold space for those possibilities. And, um, and through those questions, we, came, we touched on a little bit of what we're going to talk more about today, which is moving through inner and outer obstacles. Um, so a good question to start with would be what do what do your inner and outer obstacles look like um, maybe through the call yesterday you, you had some desires come up um, you got in touch with some things that you'd like to create whether those are artistically or uh, in other ways in your life um, how you'd like your life to look how you'd like to create it and um, and Generally, as soon as we give ourselves permission to receive what we desire, uh, immediately what comes up our uh, concerns, those um, uh, concerns and doubts about what's possible. Do I have the resources? Do I have the time? Do I have the money? Um, and, and do I have the ability? Do I have the skill set? Can I trust myself to fulfill on this? Like all those things are, and those, are what we want to look at on this call of what um, what your inner and outer obstacles are and how those are related to each other. Um, cool, awesome. So I just want to because I haven't I want to just get present here and say hi to everybody. Thanks again for coming to join us. Um, and. Uh, David and I, and you and I, when we were talking about this call, recognized that we have a little bit, we come from two different sides of it a little bit, because I have this um, viewpoint that what looks like outer obstacles and challenges are actually, there is no such thing as an outer obstacle or challenge. It's all an inner obstacle that we have somehow found a way to actualize in the outside world because then it looks like something that we really can't get over or beyond. It looks like something outside of our control, maybe. Um, and yet when you move the locus of control inside and recognize that possibly, try this on for size, everything is your creation. Everything is on some level, conscious or unconscious, your creation, your responsibility. Then you have the capacity to change it by changing your mind about it. So I think we're going to be weaving both of those things, <laughs> viewpoints into the call. Right, David? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, and I don't think that those are exclusive to each other. I think that, right. I think that there's a paradox that there is um, a key to creating is taking responsibility for all that is around us and all that manifests in our lives. Um, and yet there's a different flavor of the, um, there's a different flavor about how those show up. Mm. You want to talk about that? Um, more. Uh, hmm. Let's see. So, um, well, like for instance, a lot of challenges that come up are uh, are ancestral or genetic or um, generational. And uh, so there is a part of our creation of those. And yet, I think it can also be useful to recognize um, what we're dealing with is more than just something that we've created 
yesterday or today or even in this lifetime. So I don't know if we want to get on all that, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. And, and, and for everyone who's saying hi, Dina, Betty, welcome. Hi to you two. We're glad you're back. Um, ancestral. Well, you know, you know it, it, doesn't it all boil down to the same thing? Like, it's all a limiting belief that is probably that it, when it comes to ancestral that's been handed down to us and then we've bought the story and made it our absolutely. own absolutely right our, our um, relationship we have a certain relationship or judgments or ideas about those things that we a lot of them are unconscious that we don't even i mean they're they're inherited and and so it, there it takes something to bring those up and to look at um the things that we have taken on and to shift our relationship with them so that we do have a say in how we're creating because we create i think what we could say pretty safely is we we're creating either unconsciously or consciously mm -hmm. and and uh yeah i think that's the best way to say it yeah and i think you said something really important there which is um being willing to let the things come up so the, the first place when, when we want to, when we're finding ourselves stuck or thwarted in creating, and just for those of you who are joining us today for the first time, this isn't just about creating um, a creative project or an artistic project. We're really looking at this more globally as creating your whole life. But when we're not creating our lives or our project the way that we would like to, um, the first step, I think, is being willing to become aware of all the things that are stopping us. Like what, the question to ask yourself might be like, what am I not aware of that if I were aware of it would allow me to create more easily? Um, what stories am I using to block me from the creativity that I, I could be choosing? And, and the key to letting those come up is to just develop that witness self that I think we talked about yesterday. Like it's okay to just notice what programming you've been running up to now from the sense of like, oh, cool, there it is. I didn't know you were there. Like, there's no shame in it. There right. doesn't have to be. There doesn't have to be any judgment in it. Exactly. But as we become aware of it, then we can be like, hmm. Um, and one of the things that's, uh, that I love, um, and this is from Access Consciousness, one of the, there's, in the book, um, the Ten Commandments, or the Ten Keys, they call it. Don't buy or tell the story. You know, so where am I not challenging my own stories? Yeah, and what would it take for me to be willing to question whether my story is really true? And even though it's felt really true up to now, is it what I want to be true for me tomorrow and moving forward? Is it working for me anymore? Because it might have worked at some time or you wouldn't have kept believing it. Exactly. And, and that's why it's, it's really important not to go. It, it can be really easy to go into judgment um, or, or blame or shame, like you were saying. And it's really important to keep a perspective of um, there's no right or wrong here. It's really just what is working now? What is supporting the vision that I want to create for my life right now? And what is not? And just because something uh, was working before doesn't mean it's working now. It doesn't mean it's bad and wrong and that you shouldn't have done it that way. It's just, it's just part of the creation, creative process. It's constantly shifting. And so part of creating is consistently looking uh, to see, okay, what, what have I, what am I creating now and what am I, what is, what am I creating consciously? What am I creating unconsciously? And what from the past have I been bringing with me to create now that isn't necessarily going to help me with this next thing that I'm up to creating? Mm -hmm. Because there's always going to be, I think there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something we identify with oh, I didn't realize I was carrying that old belief or, or tool or, or perspective around. And wow, that really worked well for me in the past. And it doesn't work at all right now. It's just really getting in my way. So it's mm -hmm. really to be able to pull those up 
pull those old ways of being and thinking and perceiving and say, okay, let's take a look at these things. Uh, this needs to go and this needs to go. And you might notice there's some attachment to those like, oh, but I really like that thing. It feels really good when I pull that thing out. Or, um, and, and so a big piece of create, creating is a present moment thing. So, mm. it's a, so it's important to let go of um, attachments to the past. You know, maybe you can pick it up later. But for now, maybe that's something that isn't isn't working for you now. So mm -hmm. it, it, it might be uh, good to just look for a moment, if you haven't already, of things that you noticed that uh, w what obstacles um, just pop up for you right away when you think of what you really, mm -hmm. what your deepest desires are, or, or just pick one, a deep, deepest desire, that's something you'd really like to fulfill on. Um, that you haven't yet, that you really feel like that's up next for you. And maybe you don't know how that is. And, and so what mm -hmm. comes up for you maybe is mm -hmm. it? Uh, yeah. I can't have this or I can't do this because. And right. just keep writing out all your becauses. Mm -hmm. or, uh, or it's going to be really hard because dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. it might be something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't do this because it's going to be hard to, to create. I mean, can't do this because I'm too old. Right, that's a good one. Or I don't have the support I need. Or I don't have the I'm not connection. Not as good as everyone else. Right, right. A big one that comes up for me is comparison. Like uh, mm -hmm. when I'm right, working on my musical, I, I have I have judgments and concerns that come up that um, that I have to clear. Like I have to say, okay, no, I'm not entertaining that concern. Uh, one for me is comparing myself to other musicians and other writers. Oh, this isn't as good as so-and-so. I don't think people will like this. As, and I just have to let that go. I'm not, uh, creating is not a, a competition, right? You have a unique, we each have a unique expression and authentic expression to us. And uh, as long as we are looking outside of ourselves to figure out if, it's, if what we're doing is valid or a value, that's a danger zone. That is a that is a, a, a created obstacle, and and, right. and I think it's also we're saying the obstacles. When we're saying obstacles, we're not saying necessarily that that completely stops you, because obstacles sometimes don't completely stop us. They may just slow us down a lot. And so the game mm -hmm. of, that we're playing is to uh, uh, identify what those obstacles are and clear it out so you can create as freely and unfettered as possible. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And honoring your unique flow is what we're going to talk about tomorrow on tomorrow's call. So we'll dive in more deeply to that. But, um, oh, wow, the train of thought just sort of left the station. Where was I going? Um, oh, uh, you know, another thing that we can use when we hmm, feel kind of thwarted or stopped, stalled in our creativity is If I did have enough time, what would I be doing? What would I choose today? Like, mm. if, um, if money wasn't an object, what would I do today? You know, um, one of the things that I looked at that's, that's sort of a soul longing for me that I want to create in the world is, is a world where nobody goes hungry. Um, food insecurity is, is a passion of mine. And... And I was looking at, well, I don't really have enough money to help solve that problem. If I had a million dollars, I would give all this money to charity or I would build a food charity. And, and then I went, well, wait a minute, what can I do today in the direction of my goal? If money wasn't an obstacle, what might I do? Oh, I could go volunteer at the food pantry. Exactly. That's um, great. And, and, and what I'm hearing is that what that's pointing to for me is is attachment like we have a tendency we hold a vision of what we'd really like to fulfill on the way we'd like like for you a way that you'd like to contribute to the world and then we set these parameters that are probably largely in here we took on from the past uh, about what that should look like oh and for you like for instance it was money oh i should have a certain amount of money so that i could donate lots of money so letting go of our attachments to how our creative process should look or how our creation should look or the journey to creating should look uh, that's imperative 
because those will, mm -hmm. those will slow us down, if not completely stop us every time. Because we'll always have a whole slew of ideas of how that should look, right? How that, how that mm -hmm. ideally should go. And I don't know, I want to say creating is never ideal. There's never an ideal scenario. There's just whatever there is to create and whatever the path is that opens up for us in that moment. Yeah, and, and the other thing is to just really, when, we, when an obstacle thought comes up, a limiting thought comes up to our expressing our creativity, one of the things that I've really been enjoying playing with is this who does it belong to tool that comes from access consciousness. You know, when I hear a thought like, um, I don't have enough time to write, um, who does that belong to? You know, or I'm not good enough. That was a, that's been a big one for me throughout my life. I'm not good enough. Um, who, well, who does that belong to? Am I empathing other people? Um, did I inherit this from my family? Was this something that I was told as a kid? And um, I don't know, forgive me if I talked about this yesterday, but it is such a potent tool. If it feels like it's outside of you in some way, like lighter, um, or if you even hear, not mine, if you think to yourself, oh, my mother used to say that, it isn't yours. And immediately you can say that thing three times. I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. And then you can say, return to senders, return to senders, return to senders. <sighs> and then take a deep breath and just say, have the thought again. And what I generally notice is it gets lighter. Um, and I might need to do that a few times, but if I really begin to question whether or not I even really, if it's mine, um, and make a conscious decision to let it go by using that process, it starts to lose its grip on me and it stops becoming truth with a capital T. Awesome. So one way to look at obstacles. So I know we, we always like to see if anybody in the chat has any like questions or anything that they want us to speak directly to in this area. So how about we open it up for that? Yeah, please. Or maybe you'd like to share what, what obstacles you notice come up for you. Mm -hmm. Love to hear any, any feedback or input or questions. Mm -hmm. Yep, again, what story am I using to keep me from the creativity I could be choosing? And then begin to challenge yourself on whether that story is, what do you want it to be true? Is it really true? Another, thing, another resource that really helped me with this, I have to say, is a book by Gay Hendricks called um, The Big Leap. And, and in that, he identified I think it was four, four themes of why we hit our head on the ceiling of what, it, what creation is possible. And, um, this, uh, you know, so if you have the opportunity to look at that book, but, you know, there are things like fear of upstaging other people. That can be a big one. Like, where are you limiting, where am I limiting my creativity? in order to fit in with everybody else, in order to not inspire jealousy, in order to not make someone else feel bad. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that could again be, be categorized in the area of, of attachment, of attachment of being nice or being a good person or um, uh, being, uh, being liked. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, the, the attachment piece is really important to me because uh, the, I think it's important to look at, look at that because it really gets us stuck. It can get us stuck. And, and a question that I, I'd like to put out there is um, how is, is looking for yourself, how do you or how do we manipulate to have things look the way we think our creative process should look. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, with the example you were saying about um, uh, not of staging people, not wanting people to be, I guess, angry with you or kind of thing or liking you. Mm -hmm. So what manipulation do we do to try to have people like us amidst our creative process? Like you can see how that would really get in mm -hmm. with my music. If I'm, if I, I've spent a lot of time in the past working on music thinking, are people going to like this? 
people are going to, I don't know if people are going to like, I think this is too weird or like that kind of thing. And that totally gets in the way of my process. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I clear that as much as I can. I notice it when it comes up. I, I say, thank you for sharing. And I set it to the side. Now I'm going to go on creating my, uh, whatever is my authentic expression in this moment. And I think that's the biggest um, piece of this perhaps is, is being able to, for you to express your authentic, unique expression of you um, and being willing to let go of, to being willing, willing, being willing to let go of however you think that should look. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just want to report that you're getting kudos in the chat from Jan, who said that your guidance has really helped her let go of a lot of beliefs that no longer serve her. So, awesome. Woo -hoo! That's some creating. Um, I want to cycle back to something we talked on um, about before that's coming up for me, which is this idea that, like, a lot of these obstacles, like, I don't have enough time to write my great not my novel. Um, you know, we know on the surface that that's actually not true. You could wake up a half an hour earlier. You could watch um, a little bit less television. Um, you know, time is actually a resource. There's more of it than we think. But even if you set your clock a half an hour earlier every day to give yourself time to create because you're addressing the externally perceived obstacle, if you've got an internal obstacle which says that if you published a book about your experiences with aliens, everyone in your family would disown you, you're never going to make the time or you're never going to write the book even though you've made the time. Right, so, right. so once we, you know, once you've identified your story, you, the story is just a manufactured justification for why you're not choosing something. And we need to be willing to look a little bit deeper. I mean, I, I, found all, I found all kinds of buried treasure in my unconscious um, about why not to create, why not to stand out. Um, and those, uh, you know, I pretty much felt like I got it right. Like, let's say in a past life, I was regressed once to a past life where I was uh, extremely famous and extremely successful and I got stabbed by my second in command a kind of Julius Caesar complex shall we say um, and so having that in my in my unconscious led me to never get that successful because it leads to death mm -hmm. so that was kind of that's been kind of had been haunting me and undermining my creations until I was willing to own, you know, look at that. Yeah, and there's a certain degree that we all have of that. I mean, it's in our DNA. There was a time <clears throat> when standing out from the tribe, so to speak, didn't did not serve us. It, it, it would be dangerous. Would, yeah, it would lead to death. So, um, yeah, there's that. That's something that's deep inside of all of us that, that um, could be worth looking at to say, hmm. I have this fear of standing out. I think, you know, people think I'm weird or I'll be rejected by society or whatever that is. And just looking and say, well, is that really true? Or if it is true, do I care? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right just on. bring it out in the open gives us an opportunity to at least look at it objectively, bring it out into the light and say, hmm, is this, is this perception serving me in this moment? And, mm. and now what? If it is, or whether it is or not, like, okay, then now what? It gives yeah. more consciousness and awareness to, be, to bring to your creative process. And, and the more awareness we can bring to our creative process, the, um, the more power and freedom and joy and velocity we can joy? bring. Joy? No, what are you talking about? You're a madman. Just a we little must joy, struggle. Please. We're artists. We must struggle. We must oh, go insane. We must feel the pain of the universe. Yeah. I think oh. I've, I've agonized enough for several <laughs> lifetimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so everywhere we've been, like, holding on to that um, meme that great art comes from suffering. Could we let that shit go? Yeah. Like, like, what if your great art could come from your joy? Yeah. Um, and, and also, like, you know, I, I mean, 
what Jan said about how your guidance has helped her get to the other side of things, like community is really important. Um, one of the ways that I found to move through obstacles is to have people around me who don't judge me, who are not threatened by my success. Right, right. To have people who want me to be as big, as magnificent, and amazing as I can possibly be, and who at the same yeah. time aren't going to co-sign my bullshit when I say, yeah, that's, I can't do that. Yeah, and, and, and if, if, if we truly are going to be rejected by our community because, we're gonna, because of an authentic expression of who we are, do we really want to be in that community anymore? Maybe it's time for a new community. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the place where it's like, bye-bye, Felicia. Like being, um, and that's something I also had to look at. What am I not willing to lose? Or who am I not willing, who am I afraid that I will lose if I create the life I actually desire. Um, and, you know, it doesn't mean necessarily that I have to lose them, but I have to be willing to look at the fact that I've been trying to not create in order to right. keep those people around me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So very juicy stuff coming up today, I say. Yeah. So we're, we're at the end of our call. What are we, what are we, what do we want to share with them before we complete? Want to them uh, to so tomorrow we're having another one, our, our third and final yeah. one. Yep, please come is, back. If you've had a good time, if you've enjoyed what you're hearing, share it because I think the more that we can ha ha have more people in this kind of empowering conversation, um, there is room for everybody's creation. There is need for everybody's creation. Um, and I think that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow, right? Uh, and honoring the creative need. flow, yes. Yeah, and yeah. how you create uniquely, like, you know, for some people, well, we'll go into it tomorrow, but, um, and, and also, I, I think it's just worth mentioning that if these conversations have been useful, we're going to dive even deeper starting on Sunday with a class called Creativity Beyond Captivity, and that's where David and I are going to meet with you for an hour over Zoom, and each week we'll have a different topic. So it's a four week class every Sunday and the recordings will be available if you can't be with us in person and we're gonna have a private Facebook group. And this will be an opportunity for you really to look at what's coming up for you and for us to support you in creating more exuberantly, more juicily, more, mm, it just yum, with more yum, more ease and less angst. So, Amen. Uh, if that lights your boat, like if that floats your boat, hope you'll come. But tomorrow, join us free on the Pleasure Evolution Facebook page at three o'clock for uh, for day three, honoring your unique flow. And and if you want to, um, if you have a question or something you'd like for us to address tomorrow, leave them in the comments below and. Uh, We'll, we'll um, take a look at it tomorrow. Awesome. Well, fabulously fun as always, David. I'm so grateful for co-creating with you. Likewise. And for everybody tuning in. Yes. All right. Thanks, y'all. Goodbye, yeah. my lovelies. Goodbye, everyone, till we see you again. Do what gets your panties wet. <laughs>